Ever wondered what God's plan is for you? In this video, we're going to be interviewing Father Michael Zimmerman, who's going to be talking about his new video series about discernment and how to discern God's plan for you. Father Michael Zimmerman, welcome to the show. Hey, Drew. Hey, Katie. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you on. For those of you guys who don't know, uh, Father Michael was ordained uh, to the priesthood in 2017 and currently serves as the Assistant Vocations Director for the Archdiocese of Boston. He was inspired to create a discernment program for young men, uh, drawing from the wisdom that he received from his own formation into the priesthood. During the pandemic, during May of 2020, Father Michael scripted 27 videos, short videos and good videos, which are now part of a video series called Chivias. Uh, bringing in many of Father Michael's own interests, such as rock climbing, which we enjoy a lot, uh, track and field. I don't enjoy it as much, but I still like it. Art <laughs> and the city of Boston. Father Michael hopes that others can identify with his journey and recognize how pursuing God's plan for their lives will fulfill their greatest desires. So, Father Michael, can you tell us, like, tell us a little bit about your story? Like, how did you become a priest? How did you decide that this would be a good video to make with sweet drone footage and rock climbing and all of it. Oh yeah. Awesome. So, well, I guess two questions there. First is just, I guess my own kind of vocational discernment. Um, happy to go in more detail, but just really briefly, a big part for me was when I was in college, getting to know a community of religious brothers that ran the campus ministry at Boston university. Uh, they're called the brotherhood of hope. But getting to see their um, their community, their prayer, the work that they did, um, I was like, this is a beautiful life. You know, I, I could see myself doing this. Um, and so that really began the process of like discernment for me. It was like first being able to see other people living it out in a good and holy way and saying like, oh, that's really awesome. Um, and I, that's part of the inspiration for this video series as well as um, wanting to create a guide that is is not just like, oh, here's discernment of, spirits, um, discernment of spirits, or here's what a vocation is, just talking about things objectively, um, and not just giving a vocation witness, but actually like kind of combining those and giving people like a guide or a path to like address the questions that are in their own hearts and learning how to entrust the Lord uh, with that and to hear their vocation through that as well. So, go ahead. So the title is Shivias, I think. Yes. Yeah, you got <laughs> it. How, uh, where did that name come from? What inspired you in that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Shivias, it comes from the name of a work by St. Hildegard von Bingen, who is one of four female doctors of the church. Uh, the full name is Shivias Domini, which means know the ways of the Lord. Um, so we thought that's a very appropriate title for discerning one's path, one's way, one's uh, journey with God, you know, to, to holiness. Um, but then also St. Hildegard's an inspiration because besides her teachings, um, she, she was also a mystic and her visions inspired great artwork. Uh, she composed a lot of very beautiful musical chant, which we actually use in the series as well. Um, so she has this, you know, what we call like the via pulchritudinis, the way of beauty. Um, so wanting, you know, the advice and the counsel and the stories we tell in the videos also be done in a way that's very beautiful. Um, so that, as you mentioned, there's a cool cinematography, the drone shots, you know, we try to make it look really awesome and epic. Um, and so, yeah, wanting, wanting to make it, um, yeah, to, hopefully to be helpful, but also to be very beautiful as well. So, so you came up with, with this idea to, to have a vocations or their discernment videos. And then what was the next step from there? You were like, this would be awesome. And then how did it all come together with the film crew and the drone footage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it was a bit of a work in progress. So, I guess it began when I started in the vocations office. I've been working in, as assistant vocation director for about a year and a half now. And almost from the beginning, I recognized there's a need for something like this. Um, as I mentioned, there's, there's resources out there, but people, you know, a lot of people want to know God's will. They want to do it, but they don't even know where to begin. And so being able to create something to kind of walk with people through that process, um, 
so that, that's where the real desire started. But then when the pandemic happened and there's a lockdown, I was like, okay, well, <laughs> not much is going on. Might as well like put pen to paper, um, which I think is very fortuitous just because now like in the midst of a pandemic, everyone's asking these questions like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what is going on in my life? What am I supposed to do? Um, and so now to have something like this coming out to help people with those questions, I think is really awesome. In terms of the filming of it, um, that took a, so the writing of it took me about two, three weeks. It was pretty quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the filming of it uh, took a lot longer. Uh, began working with, uh, a, and this is like low budget. I, mean, I think it looks really good, but we're like really low budget. <laughs> Even like, more impressive. We're, we're overachieving pretty hard, I think. Uh, so first it was just like a seminarian uh, that I was like, hey, you come help me. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he was really awesome with some of the drone shots. Um, so a lot of the drone footage is him and it's really, really good. Um, but some of the other shots he took, we, we ended up having to like redo later. Um, <laughs> so then there was like a focus missionary um, who was um, in the in the area in Boston. I was like, can you help me? And so he helped me for a bit. And then finally, um, my friend Kelsey Cronin, who uh, works at Catholic TV, um, she kind of in her in her off hours in the evenings or early mornings, we've been going and doing shots. And um, I think we finally kind of started to hit our groove. Nice. That's awesome. The um, do you have any stories from the filming of it itself? You know, it seems it seems like it was a, a conglomeration of a lot of different trial and errors, which yeah, which is oh, basically it, our videos in a nutshell. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. I, no, I definitely have learned a lot. I my brother and I we used to make videos when I was in high school, um, and now he actually is somewhat of a minor internet celebrity. He's much more uh, well versed in this. He's in, like in the esports video game world. Um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> An influencer. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I've asked for his help with some stuff. But so, just, yeah, some funny stories. Um, with the seminarian one time, we went to this, um, some former parishioners of mine went to their house. Um, and they've got, you know, a bunch of little uh, young kids who are a lot of fun. And they just moved to like um, a house with like a big yard. And so we went, we did mass at their house, had did like a house blessing. It was really, really beautiful, really nice. And then afterwards we we're like, all right, let's, let's do the, we're going to do an interview here. Um, and the kids wanted to help uh, <laughs> with the interview, which meant they, they had some chickens in their backyard. And so they like ran and found like the biggest rooster they had and wanted to make me hold the rooster like throughout the interview. So, <laughs> so there's this, Eventually, we're going to have to release like this bloopers reel because I'm like delivering these really like serious lines. And then the camera just slowly <laughs> pans, pans down and you can see this massive rooster just sitting in my lap. And the kids yeah. are just cracking up in the background. Yeah. So that was pretty awesome. That, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Type yeah. Of <laughs> yeah, you can see in the in the in the trailer um, for it, there's like this there's a picture of the family. And like I'm holding the dog at this point, and the dog starts yeah. licking the chicken next to it. It's <laughs> it's pretty awesome. We have, we have a good we have a good seminarian friend that uh, says that we need to see more religious doing people things. Yes, yeah. please doing people. <laughs> and, and, and I do think that there's a good amount of that in this video series, actually. Yeah, yeah and uh, um, I think there's a lot that people can relate to in you know the outdoors, the hiking, the rock climbing, which we enjoy as well the art it, there's it, it's important for i think people to realize that you can live a religious life and discern a vocation but also still be a person yeah do people things <laughs> yeah I don't know, yeah so talk about that a little bit yeah totally um well, i guess just first that was definitely i think an important part of this series is like wanting to make it like incarnational like in the flesh mm -hmm. like this is real and so being able to to tell stories from my life, but also to show the places, to show the people that are, were involved. And yeah, just doing everyday things as well. Like, yeah, I'm a real person. This is a real thing. Like if you're feeling like maybe God is calling you to something like this, like you're not crazy. This is, mm -hmm. this is real, you know? Um, and yes, like I'm doing in a concrete place and time in Boston, you know, but mm -hmm. wherever you are in discerning, like God is speaking to you and he has a plan for you like here and now. Um, 
so I think, yeah, that, that is a huge thing. And yeah, being able to see, um, being able to see religious and priests, like as normal people doing normal things. Like a lot of times I remember as like a high school or, um, you know, there, there were a few religious brothers at my high school. Um, and I knew we called them brother this or brother that, but I had no clue, like even what a religious brother was. I didn't even know why we called them that. <laughs> and, um, it's kind of like, you know, with young kids, they, they kind of, freak out when they see their teacher in like the grocery store they're like <laughs> what are they doing here like they're <laughs> they eat food <laughs> yeah exactly they eat food <laughs> like and so i think a lot of people are like that with like priests and mm -hmm. seminarians and religious too it's kind of like yeah they're human beings they do normal stuff that's the, the first question people ask at the seminary or you no, know, the first thing they ask priests too is like so so can you drink alcohol is usually like the number one question <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I mean, you've heard of Irish Catholics before, right? <laughs> <laughs> the Irish priest in the pub is kind of a joke, that's right? right? Like, <laughs> well, but but that's I think that's so important and, and such an important part of the discernment process is it's much harder to discern uh, this abstract concept of like, am I called to the priesthood? But I think it's uh, much easier to discern like, am I called to this community, this mm -hmm. religious vocation? What does it look like? What does my day-to-day -day look like? Um, you know, even in the married life, it's like, oh, am I called to be married? It's a lot harder than there's a physical person where you're like, are mm -hmm. we called to be married? And so, uh, so I, I would just encourage our listeners to, uh, as they you know take a look at the series and watch that, is if you are really discerning something to take take the next step, the next concrete step, you know, maybe... Maybe you're not, uh, you don't know if you're called to the priesthood. Just watching this video. But series. Yeah, maybe watching this video series is the next step. Or, you know, it's like maybe you're not, maybe you don't know if you're called to the priesthood, but maybe discern are you called to the seminary? Because mm -hmm. that is the next step. So, yeah. No, I think that's a great point. You definitely, you can't know until you go to a certain extent mm -hmm. you know just like just like you can't you can't uh, you can't discern who you're called to marry unless you start dating them like yeah. um like visiting the seminary or you know getting to know a priest visiting a community um and, and also just like just i think a helpful people a uh, bit of advice for people is like some, some people when they're just saying they just try to shop around they try to like mm -hmm. oh i'm just going to read online about 100 different orders and find the perfect one that way it's like no like look at your life like see what's where god has placed you you know what has it impacted you and like start from there like discern with one one thing first and then like rule that mm -hmm. out and then move on rather than try to discern 100 things at once we you know we're in an amazon like uh, consumerist <laughs> mentality where it's all about getting as much information and you know we get paralyzed by our never making I'll put, a decision i'll put the parish priest in the shopping cart I'll yeah put franciscans in the shopping cart <laughs> exactly and yeah i'll go back and review it that's, right, yeah. that's not how it months. works yeah <laughs> uh, what other topics are covered in the series yeah so the the series the it's 27 episodes. So as you said, it's a lot of episodes, but um, they're short and they're very accessible. Um, but there is a structure to it. There is a, a plan, a progression to it. Um, and the first two parts are actually based on the virtue of chastity, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, which is essential for living out our vocation, but maybe in a way that's surprising. Uh, the way the catechism talks about the virtue of chastity is two parts. One, integrity of self leading to integrality of gift. Um, so the first part of the series, the first nine episodes, is about achieving this integrity of self. How can I be whole and undivided in my heart? Uh, how do I have the freedom and self-mastery over myself um, so that I'm not divided and torn in a million different directions? But then leading to an integrality of gift, being able to make a complete whole gift of myself, um, which is the second part of the series, recognizing my life, my vocation as a gift of myself. And then the third part focuses most specifically on like the priesthood and how that is a gift of one's life to God and the church. That, that, that's such a beautiful message, especially in our society today where it's all about me. It's all about what can I get out of things. And, and the church is uh, very beautifully said that we find ourselves when we give ourselves away, like mm. we've, we've got it all backwards. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 
And I think that the truth in that first section two applies to anyone almost discerning anything, you know, like it's like this reality of getting to, to sit and listen to God and see his plan and see that self-control and then accepting that surrender to him is such a beautiful lesson that I, I, I personally enjoyed listening to, and I'm not currently discerning my vocation. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. I hope hope this series it's definitely, I mean, it's most Mm -hmm. specifically for men discerning the Mm -hmm. priesthood, but I think there, there should be something for everyone here as, you know, especially in the first and second part of just like first, how do, yeah, a, arriving at a greater place of freedom in my life, you know, to respond, to, to say yes to God. Um, so like, what are my, what are the fears that I have that are holding me back? Um, and how can I entrust and grow in my relationship with Jesus so that I can uh, be free to say yes to whatever he wants um, and have that, again, that self mastery or understanding necessary to do that. And in, in a time to grow in that trust is so critical. I think in this pandemic, like these are the questions that people are asking and to learn that God has a plan even mm-hmm. through an in this moment in time, he knew that this was going to happen. Like he's, his hands are totally in this um, mm-hmm. and aware. Mm-hmm. So where where can people access the videos and the program or, or learn more about the program itself? Yeah, so vocationsboston.org is our website, and that's the best place to go because you can sign up for early access to the videos as soon as they're ready. And then we also have uh, like a reflection prayer guidebook to accompany each mm-hmm. episode so you, people can kind of go deeper in each topic. Uh, so that's vocationsboston.org. And then our Facebook page and YouTube channel, we'll be releasing the episodes week by week so they can follow along their vocations, Boston. Awesome. And we will link all of those in the description of the video Mm -hmm. for our listeners if you guys want to check those out. Uh, Well, Father Mark Zimmerman, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Any parting shots or last stories before we Uh, say goodbye? Well, do you want another fun story I can tell? Yeah, let's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this one, <laughs> so in the trailer, again, I encourage people to watch the trailer because it's epic. You got to see it. So there's, we will, uh, we'll make sure it's, it's in the link. All right, sweet. Yep. So, you know, there's a big, there's a huge bridge in it. Um, yeah. Uh-huh. The huge bridge we're walking across. So uh, one of the episodes we're kind of filming in that area and we're kind of under the bridge at this point. And there's a, it's called Echo Bridge because it's got some, when you go underneath, there's a platform you can stand on and there's some really cool echo sounds. So um, while we're filming, this woman is on the platform and like her phone started to slip and long story short, she like fell off the platform, like into the water, like down like 15 feet, like slid down the bank and went into the water. And so we're, we're kind of filming on the other side and we hear this yelling and we turn around and we see this woman just fall in. And um, Kelsey was great. She like just booked it. You know, she it's, it wasn't short. The bridge is huge. She had to like get up and run around to the other side. And I packed up the, the film stuff, uh, like our equipment, and then went over and joined them. And so the, the woman, though, she she was in really good spirits considering she just fell into the water. So we, we kind of <laughs> sat with her. We sat for, with her for like an hour, just kind of talking with her, making sure she was OK, because she was kind of scraped up. And we ended up driving her back to her place. Um, but she was really funny about it because she was she she was Jewish. She's a Jewish woman, and she's like, "I can see the headlines now. Jewish woman <laughs> falls into river, saved by Catholic priests." You know? <laughs> so it was. I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "She could yeah write some headlines." But it was <laughs> it was it was just kind of a crazy incident. We ended up not getting our filming done that day, but you know, God had other plans for okay. us. So yeah, um, awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you again for joining us, for sharing some of these stories, for creating a truly high quality and entertaining as well as deep program. And so I make sure for all of our listeners to go ahead and uh, check out Vocations Boston for this film work and like this video, please share it with somebody. I think that that like, especially someone you know that is discerning that needs uh, to walk through this process with God, like you can change a life. And so please share that uh, with a friend on social media. And we look forward to seeing you soon and we'll be praying for you.